Hey guys, welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed if you're not. Hit the button and if you're listening on YouTube, hit that like. It's like walking in the room, hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into this reality chat. All right, guys, so most of you have already heard about it, but we're just going to get into it. Brandy Glanville, formerly of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, she's accusing Andy Cohen of S.H., and claims that he FaceTimed her drunk and invited her to watch him get physical, if you will, with another Bravo personality. I hate, I'm sorry, I hate when they call them stars, and I'm not even going to get into that conversation, but all right. So former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member Brandy Glanville is accusing Bravo's Andy Cohen of S harassment. She claims Andy allegedly sent her a video of himself looking and acting like he was inebriated in a letter her lawyer sent over to NBC. According to documents obtained by Page Six, Andy expressed to Brandy that he allegedly wanted to smash a Bravo star while imagining her. He also allegedly invited her to watch on FaceTime if his fantasy actually became a reality one day. Mr. Cohen was Miss Glanville's boss at the time and exercised complete and and total control over her career, the letter further states. Now let's pause it right there for a moment. That we cannot deny. He was her boss. So I don't care if it was supposed to be a joke or not. It never should have happened. And this just goes to show you that these people that are in these positions like Andy, and I'm going to throw Carlos Queen in that as well. I'm not saying he's ever been accused of anything like this, but I believe that a lot of times because they're not extremely professional, they may know what they're doing in terms of producing the reality shows that they have been doing. It does not mean that they are a good quote unquote boss. And it also doesn't mean that they are professional. Just like using my industry, for example, I'm primarily in the beauty industry. I've been in the beauty industry since 2008. I've been in wellness since 2006. So you can say wellness and beauty since 2006. And anyway, I came from the legal field. I was a legal assistant for 12 years before I transitioned into the wellness and beauty industry. Just because someone is a great hairstylist doesn't mean that they're going to be an amazing business owner, or even if they become a business owner, being a boss and knowing how to actually have employees and operate professionally when it comes to having employees. You can't talk to people however you want to talk to them. You can't treat them however you want to treat them. There are lines that you cannot cross. And a lot of times people do cross lines that no one checks them about or calls them on so one day they get someone who gives them a reality check and as messy as some people may say brandy is and yes she indeed is extremely messy it doesn't make what he did right whether it was a joke or not okay so i just wanted to pause right there for a moment just to get into that because i know a lot of people are going to be like well brandy's messy and andy was probably just joking Mm, okay this was an extraordinary abuse of power that left Miss Glanville feeling trapped and disgusted. It is inconceivable that Mr. Cohen remains in his post in spite of this behavior and harkens back to the bad old days of Matt Lauer and NBC News when profits were prioritized over people. The news comes months after Brandy was accused of sexual A from a Bravo personality who has since decided to sue the network for alleged ordeal for the alleged ordeal former real housewives of new jersey cast member caroline manzo's claim in the legal complaint that brandy sat her down on the couch and quote forcibly squeezed her booty cheeks together thrusted quote her tongue in manzo's mouth and grinded on her while filming among other allegations listen 
I don't know where all of this is going to go, but it has to, I believe this is going to go somewhere. This is not just going to end, I don't believe, quietly. I'm not saying that it's going to be the end of Andy Cohen immediately, but I believe that this may start to wrap some things up for him because there's been a lot of talk about Andy Cohen over the years. If you remember back, I believe, I don't remember what year it was. I never watched these New Year's Eve shows, but he and his best friend from CNN, they were hosting the New Year's Eve countdown. And I believe he and the friend were getting drunk on camera. We also know Don Lemon, he was doing the same thing. A lot of people used to make jokes about Don Lemon getting, you know, inebriated on camera. But people, you know, a lot of times they overlook things, but they still have it in their files. And Andy, he's he's asked some things and, you know, people may say, well, he was hosting a reunion. He was just asking the questions that the viewers were asking him to ask. But I'll be honest, sometimes I don't even believe that those cards that he's reading even has any questions on them from other people. I've said that for years. I believe that he uses that as a ploy to ask some things that he really wants to ask. So he'll put a post out there on social media and say, the reunion for Beverly Hills or the reunion for Atlanta or the reunion for New Jersey will be filming next weekend. Send in your questions and your name so that I can act, child please, he can just act like he's reading someone's comments and and he'll say, Susan from Saskatchewan asks, you know, and it, so I've said that for years. I could be wrong, but that's my assumption. That's my opinion. And that's what I think. And I have the right to think what I want to think. It doesn't mean that it's right, but it's what I believe. But I'm using that or saying that, I should say, to say that it doesn't matter if Brandy has been inappropriate, not saying that what she has done has been okay. It doesn't take away from what he has allegedly done. And you already know how it is, especially not just in that industry, but when it comes to a lot of people and them feeling like they have been singled out, if they can find something on you to call out, they're going to be like, I'm not going down on this ship by myself because you are dirty and I'm going to call out your dirty deeds as well. And we'll see if you're still standing when you're allowing me to be shaken and to be crapped on and, and whatever else. And I'm quite sure that she's an she's angry because I believe that she's been wanting to come back to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for a long time and then finally getting the opportunity to film with them again when she was doing the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. And they're saying that that season may not come out because of the lawsuit that Caroline Manzel has put on the network because of what Brandy has done. I don't know, guys, but <laughs> he's since come out to make a statement. He says the video shows Kate Chastain and I very clearly joking to Brandy. It was absolutely meant in jest. And Brandy's response clearly communicated she was in on the joke. That said, it was totally inappropriate and I apologize. Listen, I don't believe that that apology that he put out on social media is going to make it. I don't believe it's going to fly. I don't believe that it's going to wipe this away. Because do you know how many times someone has been put in a position like that and they just are trying to protect the position that they are in or the position that they have been given? So they'll act like it's okay, but then once something happens and they're no longer benefiting from the situation, that's when it comes out. So you can't really use in, in the law and in workplace harassment situations and things like that, you can't just come out and say, well, yeah, I did it, but it was just a joke. Everyone, well, I won't say everyone, almost everyone says it. They'll either say, oh, I was just joking, or they'll say, well, she wanted it. 
she was okay with it. You know, like they'll, they'll just never come out and admit that I did something that was wrong. It should have never happened. I want to take accountability for it. It was my mistake. I wasn't thinking or I was selfish. I was thinking about my own needs or whatever, you know, it was at the time. Or even I was drunk and being sober, seeing that happening in real time, looking back over it, that never should have happened and I want to take responsibility for it. No, he's doing what most people do. It was a joke and I apologize. But, you know, also throwing her under the bus at the same time, it was a joke. And clearly she was in on the joke. You know what I mean? It's the type of stuff like that that bothers me because I feel and this may not be the popular opinion, but that's fine because as I try to do my best on my platform, I may not know everything. I may not know all the details and I definitely don't know these people. But just because Brandy is someone that is seen as problematic, it doesn't mean that what Andy did was okay. It doesn't mean that what Andy did is excused now because he came out to say, I apologize. Oh, but also she was in on the joke. You know what I mean? It, it's that type of stuff. It's just, I don't believe it's going to fly if she has good legal counsel. I, again, like I say, if she has good legal counsel and they can, <laughs> they can really see this through to the end. So if she was laughing back then, it doesn't mean that she wasn't uncomfortable. Do you know how many people laugh when they're in, they are in uncomfortable situations? It doesn't make it right. So for him to come out, he honestly, in my personal opinion, I feel like that was a stupid move on his part to come out and make that statement. But you know why he did it? He's not taking it seriously. And he really believes that his position at Bravo through NBC Universal is so tight that it doesn't really matter. This is a legal matter. Who is representing him? He should have never came out and made that statement on social media. If he had good legal counsel already, they would have advised him to not say anything, to not say anything about this. So that's that old saying, you know, it's not just in the criminal justice system. If you get arrested and they're reading your, your rights and they say, whatever you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, that, uh, that actually goes for civil court as well. Now, you may have counsel, they may ask the court, you know, to strike this information, not be able to use this information or whatever. But once a jury of your peers is called about to be involved in this situation in court, if it gets there, like as I'm saying, because it may not even get to that point. This will probably never see the light of day in a courthouse, except for maybe some, some hearings or whatever, but an actual trial, it won't get there because... If they're smart, they're going to settle this thing out of court. And that's what Brandy's looking for. And hey, I don't fault her for that. But my point is, if it gets to the courts and his attorneys are asking for this statement that he put on social media to not be able to be used as evidence, I don't care if these people say that, oh, we're not familiar with this person, you know, to get on the jury. Sometimes people lie and you never know if these people have already heard uh, heard about this statement that was put out on social media and they already have that bias within them and they're trying to overlook it or whatever, but they already know about it. He should have never made that statement. If he was reached out to by page six or any other media outlets to request a statement on the matter, he should have done what most people do in situations like this. This is a legal matter that I cannot discuss right now. Leave it at that. But him coming out to make this statement to me shows how he feels about Brandy and also feels about this situation. He's not taking Brandy or this situation seriously. So for him to just say, Brandy's response clearly communicated she was in on the joke. That said, it was totally inappropriate, and I apologize, is not going to fly. This is a legal matter. It's not like Brandy just came out, 
did a live video or a pre-recorded video, put it out on social media, or even a tweet, or what do you call it, an X now, since it's not Twitter anymore, it's formerly known as Twitter, I don't know, but putting a post out on social media where she's typing up to say, Andy was inappropriate with me, he did this, he did that, he did the other, and it wasn't something that was a legal matter, she was just, you know, saying what happened, and then he responded to it via social media, what she put on on social media, in a situation like that, okay, fine, but this is a legal matter, and then he went out here and responded to a legal matter with a tweet. That is the most asinine thing a person that is supposed to be professional should do. And that just goes to show you how unprofessional he really is. And I don't know if you all remember Real Housewives of Potomac reunion. I can't remember if it was last season or the season before that. And Giselle, who I can't stand, asked Andy if he had ever had an experience with a woman. And you know what I mean. And this was during like a little break and they were still recording and they actually showed that clip and then he said no he hadn't and she said well I'll be your first experience now I don't remember exactly what Andy said actually I don't think that he was interested (laughs) but it sounds like he was interested with um somebody else and he named that person when he reached out to Brandy when he was with Kate Chastain but at any rate I digress a lot of inappropriate things happened with that network and even though what Bethany attempted to do didn't really go anywhere. I I didn't think she was lying about a lot of the things that she was putting out there. I just felt like the motives weren't really right. And that's why it didn't really go anywhere. But with that being said, I don't think that this is going to fizzle out. I believe this is serious. I know a lot of people are giving Brandy the side eye and they're saying she's messy. She knows good and doggone well that he was just joking or whatever. But it doesn't matter. He crossed the lines. He was her employer. You can't do that type of stuff. There are workplace rules. It doesn't matter if it's Hollywood or if it's Tuscaloosa, Alabama in some little office somewhere or whatever. You cannot do certain things. Employees have rights. Yes, employers have rights too. But the United States of America, even though a lot of unfair things happen when it comes to people who are employed... It is more it is more set up for employees to have rights than more so employers. Employers get a lot of rules induced on them, some that you don't even know about. I'm an employer. I don't you know, I don't have a lot of employees. I had more than I do now at one point in time and I'm glad that I don't have as many as I used to because it's a lot. And it you know, learning the things that I've learned over the years It's like you really have to want to be in business where you have a lot of employees in order to do that because it it just really comes with a lot of liabilities. It really does. So with that being said, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that this situation is serious or do you think this is going to fizzle out? I shared my thoughts. I would love to know what you guys think. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and now I'm going to say bye.